Good morning, everyone. I know you guys are excited, as, as I am as well. Uh, let's put your hands together and say amen for our own Pastor Bland. Good morning. Get your Bibles. Let's turn to where we want to start. First Peter. Let's try that. First Peter. Let's see if this is working. Is this okay? Yeah, it's working good. First Peter. Mother said her Bible is getting ragged and ragged. That means she's using it. Amen. Amen. Almost everybody got a Bible, but almost nobody's reading it. And we don't say that in condemnation because there's a whole lot of preachers that's not reading their Bibles. And uh, one thing about it, I'm a sports fan, but I don't care too much for hockey. And, and one of the things, the reason I don't care that much about it is because I don't know. When you don't know about something, it just uh, it doesn't interest you. I didn't really get interested in basketball until one day in PE, uh, maybe sixth or seventh grade, uh, teachers uh, taught us, uh, Fred, about um, guard, forward, center, running a few plays and whatever, and then seeing the ball go through a basket and bringing it back out. And it became very interesting to me. And things that you don't understand, we tend to stay away from. So one of the things that they didn't do for us was the fundamentals. You know, you just, you just, you ever been on a job where they just, they hired you and they put you there, but they don't train you. And you sitting there and you uncomfortable because you don't feel secure in your job. You think because now sooner or later, if I don't do something, they're going to find somebody else. And so it's been the same way about the Bible. They just thought that if they, appeal to our emotion and we start crying and snotting about how low down we had been going to the clubs and doing all the rest of the things that we were doing uh do we come up and get a preacher our hand and then the secretary put our name down and then they find some job for you to do you know it's uh what do you want to do while you're in the church if you can sing then we'll put you in the choir and so then you just basically be a a, a good person uh you uh, don't get a pastor in any trouble or anything and bring your dress tail down some. Don't come in there with the same clothes you had in the club with. And, and then, you know, we, we pretty much accept you. But the thing about it is, is I heard somebody say this one time, Brother Jeff, and, and I, I really believe it's the truth. There ain't no blessing in being ignorant. And, and they, that, one of the biggest lies Mother Bland ever was told was when they said, what you don't know won't hurt you. What you don't know will hurt you. Amen. What you don't know will hurt you. And, and so I also found out, Dwayne, that you can uh, spend a lifetime ignorant and foolish and don't nobody care. Don't, don't nobody care. Because what I've seen in church for so long was all the pastor wanted you to do was to mind him and to make sure that they meet the budget. Long as it was enough money flowing... You could do almost anything. And you can tell that by the folks that he put in charge. It wasn't nothing but a crying shame that he made what you might call the steward and he made what you might call the dead deacon and whatever. And the only reason was because he had a good job and was paying good money. All right. Amen. All right. Hey, glory to God. Amen. So you know what? God calls for singleness of mind. And so long as you want something else beside God, you'll never know him. All right. But the day... That you get in your heart. I, I got to have you, Lord. And, and whoever want to leave, whoever don't want to fool with me, whoever is mad, whoever don't want, you, you got to go. Amen. Because my soul is thirsty for the Lord. The Lord said, one time he said, he that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Ain't nobody getting ready to just lack a days you go, you know, just just mosey up on the Lord. Right. You're gonna have to push your way in. Right. You're gonna have to press your way in. Jesus told the Pharisees at one time, he said, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. And the violent 
take it by force. Let me tell you something. In order to know God, you're going to have to make some folk mad. In order for you to press your claim, yes, some folk going to have to walk off and not fool with you no more. But I know what the old folk was talking about. Mother, I don't want you shaking hands already. I know what the old folk was talking about when they said, give me Jesus yes, and him alone. I'm so glad this morning that my soul is thirsty for the Lord. I'm so glad this morning, Uncle George, I know why I'm at church. Amen. I'm not here to see who here. I'm not here to impress anybody. But I come here today on assignment and a mission to get some help from the Lord. Lord, help me. Help me, God. And help, I found this out, too. In, in church, uh, you can be too pretty and self-conscious. And you can't get no help because you're worried about what somebody going to say. But I want you to know that in the midnight hour when your tears, when your pillow is wet with tears, when your body is aching with pain, can't nobody help you but the Lord. He told the nation of Israel at one time, say, you shame to own me in front of this adulterous generation. What I found out was is that we spend a lot of time worrying about folks ain't thinking about us. You, you worried about folk that don't care whether you eat or whether you don't eat. And the folks that really love you don't never see you. They begging for your company. First Peter chapter one. We want to start a new series today. Uh, God is so faithful. I used to wonder, I said, Lord, what are we going to do now and everything? And then God had to tell me, he said, look, how many times I'm going to have to tell you I don't need your help? So I got the easiest job in the world. All I got to do is move out the way and let God have his way. Uh, I enjoyed, how many enjoyed this series on praise and worship? I, I enjoyed that. I, I really did because y'all church folk had just about made me sick of praise and worship. You, you had because you know y'all y'all want to praise, dance, sell make dances. You, you want to stand up there and sing nine or ten songs or whatever. Just thank you, Jesus. The word. I need a word. I need communication from God. I don't mind one song, maybe two. But when you're trying to put on a concert or something, huh? I, I, if I'm going to a concert, I'm going to go where somebody wait. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, sir. Not amateur hour at the Apollo. All right. Thank you, Jesus. And so I got a better understanding of praise and worship. But the Lord said, Lady Deborah, uh, we want to do a series now on the providential care of the Lord. And I hope that big word does not scare you. Come on. Uh, but now I'm this kind of person here. Uh, a teacher is not supposed to teach you what you already know. If it's a teacher, he's supposed to impart something yes, that was not clear to you at first. Right. Also, uh, I don't want nobody dumbing me down just because you think that I'm not smart enough to understand something. If you will take your time and explain it to me, you might be surprised at what I can grasp. We want to talk about the providential care of the Lord. And providence only means how that the Lord, through all of our ups and downs, through our twists and our turns, and down through the years, God been good through me. How that God, while I'm in situations, Sister Jean, that look like, uh, ain't no way for me to make it. But some kind of way, God keeps making a way for me. You see, I'm, I'm not here this morning for you. I love you, but I'm here this morning for me. Because, you see, I don't really know what God has done for you. But I know that the Lord brought me from a mighty long way. So when, 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 when I didn't have sense enough, to come home at night God protected me I turned cars over I, 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 I always I don't know why I always want to jump on somebody bigger than me I look thank you Jesus maybe it was that mad dog I was drinking that MD 2020 never would 
get me to jump on no little guy. Always made me want to slap somebody about two times bigger than me. <laughs> Had already been to the penitentiary for killing somebody. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I remember one night cricket that in, in, in the crack house that there was a guy. Now that guy that ended up getting killed himself. But that guy jumped in the middle right there. And you know they called me preacher in the dope house. <laughs> your calling gonna follow you. I don't care where you go. They, they, they know your calling better than you do. But the guy jumped in the middle of it because the guy was getting ready to take my life and he jumped in the middle. He said, don't kill him. Please don't kill preacher. <laughs> don't kill him. He don't know no better. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. The providential care of the Lord. Right. I said, Lord, why are we going? He said, well, he said, what my people are going through yeah. is Satan fights their mind as to whether or not I can keep them. All right. so true. <laughs> we already know what God had done. Yeah. But when this at midnight hour, when ain't nobody around, and see, that's when I didn't come here today to, to, to even worry about you. See, cause, cause, see, he fights me when you ain't around no way. Right, right. When I get by myself, yes. it, it ain't going to work out. <laughs> you see, when you love your family like I love my family, then he starts fighting you about your children. Right. And, and, and then he starts fighting you about your finances. And then, then he starts fighting you about yourself. You know, you ain't what you say you are. You ain't, you ain't doing nothing but faking. You, you, you ain't, but, but I came here to tell you today that God never saved nobody that he couldn't keep. I came today to declare to heaven that God, through his providential care, God, what did David say? David said, I've been old. I said, I've been young. And now I'm old. But I've never, 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 never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. The providential care of God. Look at your neighbor and say, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. That's okay. It's going to be all right. Start with me here. The Bible says, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers, Scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Paul has Peter, I mean not Paul, God has Peter, a, an, an apostle to the, gent, uh, to the Jews, to the circumcision. God has Peter to talk to people that have been disenfranchised. He talks to people that have been moved out of their normal habitat. He talks to, thank you, Jesus. He talked to people that's in trouble. He talked to people that things are not as. Yes, sir. He talking to married folks that's separated. Okay. He talking to families that have been estranged. Um, he talking to people that are dislocated. Okay. And he says to them, to the, stra to the strangers mm -hmm. that are scattered abroad. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. I'm getting some help already. Look, look at somebody else and tell them it's going to be all right. You see, the reason I have to come and, 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 and to, to, to assemble myself together with other believers is, is because I tend to forget. You see, I'm doing fine as long as things is going fine. But when trouble get in my way, look like I get amnesia. Is it just me? Look like I get amnesia. And so that's the reason that sometimes, Angela, I have to get off in the corner by myself, just me and God, Catherine, and I have to ask the Lord, say, Lord, do it again. I don't mean no harm. You know when Jesus, when he touched the man that was blind and he asked the mother, he said, now how do you see me? He said, I see me in that tree. He said, no, 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 come back here. I need to touch you again. Sometimes I just can't see things right. Sometimes, I don't mean no harm, good church folk, but sometimes because of what I'm going through, uh, look like ain't nobody catching hell like I'm catching. Look like everybody else's stuff is just working out. Look, look like everybody else's their finances is just flowing. And look like I can't catch a break nowhere. 
I'm talking about the providential care of the Lord. And you see, I serve a God, Vandal Jr., that specializes in looking like he ain't going to show up. I serve a God that seemed like this. I think I got him figured out, Willie. I, okay, God gonna do this and God gonna do that. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, man, the bottom fall out of all of that. And I'm trying to nine the time <laughs> that I got to know that I know that I know <laughs> that ain't no God but you, God. <laughs> and I know I heard you, God. <laughs> I know I'm not out here just on my own. <laughs> I know I didn't just imagine this. <laughs> so Sister Tracy Coney, He's talking to these displaced folks, folks that's in trouble. And you see, that's been the problem with church uh, as we know it. We come here and act like everybody doing fine. We, we come here and act like everything is lot of dotty. And <laughs> thank you, Jesus. And we don't know nothing until the preacher on trial. We don't know nothing until... <laughs> But what I'm saying is, and what I hate about folks is, well, I know you. I, I know if you know that, how come you ain't tell me? Don't, don't wait until I go off the cliff. If you my brother, then you ought to. Because ain't nobody sitting up here ain't got some kind of problem. Nobody sit up here and got something that if the Lord don't help you, it's going to destroy you. And I ain't talking about no long time from now. So I don't need to wait on revival, Valerie Lacey. I don't wait until the, until the preacher preaches his favorite message. I need somebody to hear from God today because I don't want to eat. How is it that I'm saved and God got God's spirit in my life, but my life is ragged as a can of kraut? How is it that I'm saved and I'm walking sloop foot? I can't, I can't make straight path for my, why is it that I'm saved and I got no joy? Right. How is it that I'm saved and me and my children can't even talk? Me and my wife, we done, all the fun is going out of our marriage. I'm laughing and grinning with everybody but my wife. We don't even know. <laughs> You, you mess around, somebody be talking about your husband and say, is that the same man I'm married to? <laughs> you ain't spoke to your wife in, in all week, but let the telephone ring. You just talking and grinning. Yeah, put that skillet on your head. Thank you, Chief. I'm that preacher. All I want is a little help. I'm going to let you go. I promise you I ain't. That's all, that's all I want, just a little help. Look, look what Peter says to these folk. He says, elect. Do you know what elect means? E -e elect means that you didn't choose him. I'm happy right now. You see, it's a difference when you choose somebody else. Uh, they might not really want you. But now when somebody choose you, y'all probably different than me. Every now and then, Tracy Coney, I remind the Lord of it. I remind the Lord, Lord, I wasn't bothering you. You come and got me. I was happy in what I was doing. But you came and got me. You sent the Holy Ghost. You sent the hound from heaven to come get anybody here ever had the Holy Ghost to just wear them? Anybody here ever had the Spirit of God? To just start dealing with you? And that's the reason that it's very dangerous in church when folks start judging other people. You don't know what God did. I know what I look like. See, you're looking at my clothes. You're even looking at my actions. But you don't know that in 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, God got me up on my knees, clapping my hands, throwing my hands up, telling God yes. Yes, God. See, some of us realize that we ain't gonna never be nothing until God make us that. We tried to make ourselves be this. We tried to do this with ourselves and have failed. Some of us, Brother Brimley, have lived long enough to realize that if the Lord don't do it, if God don't help us, we ain't gonna be able to stand the storm. 
So I don't come here today with any kind of pretense like I'm strong. I, I got some kind of ability. I'm morally more upright than anybody else. But I come to God today saying, God, please help me. Help, help me, God, because I can't help myself. So Peter says to these folks, elect. Now look how you got elect. According to the foreknowledge of God. So, Mother Helen, what that means is, and you see, I got to come back here and shake your hand. You see, when trouble hits me, that's when all the hateful stuff that church folks done said against me, that's when it began to have its effect. You see, because normally, if I got seven or eight dollars in my pocket, I don't care what you say. That's just me, y'all. God knows not to give me too much. But if I got seven or eight dollars in my pocket, I didn't tell you, go help the bow. I don't need no help. But when the right trouble hit, that's when all the hateful stuff. You see, it's a bad thing when you go into church with folk that don't like you. You go into church with folk that act like they don't even know your name. You ever been around folks? Y'all been around each other 20 years. You know their name, but they know what's your name? And you see, what it does is, it makes you think you're all out here by yourself. And that's the reason I have to remember the providential care of the Lord. Also, Brother Jeff, I have to realize that many times God will let me be around hateful people to teach me the love of God. You see, you, you don't know love until you've seen selfishness. You, you don't know love until you see selfishness. Eh? Here you got somebody that you done done everything you know to do for. Here you got somebody else you done sacrificed for. Them. You done been over backwards. You done without for yourself. And that person don't care nothing about you. Then here you got somebody that you don't even, you don't, you don't call them. You don't fool with them or nothing. But every time you come around, they light up like a cheap Christmas tree. <laughs> yeah, you see, thank you. Look how I got to be elect. It was by the foreknowledge of God. Uh, we're going to go slow with this series right here because I need to get this down in my spirit. Because you see, it's very important for me to know that God did not just like wind me up like a spinning top and leave me out there to see what would happen. You see, I, I need to understand that I'm, I'm up under the care of God. <laughs> now, not up under y'all care, but up under, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I'm up under the care of God. Yes, sir. I remember one time, Mother, that David had messed up. David got scared. And so he started counting the folk to see did he have enough people. Like he numbered the people. But you see, see, for God don't want you depending upon your strength. God don't want you to stand upon how many folk that you got. He told Gideon you got too many. So David numbered the people and it angered God. And they see they were up under the law. If you angered God back then, all you folk that want to be up under the law, if you angered then, somebody had to die. And so now God asked David, he said, now David, I'm going to have to punish you. But I'm going to give you a choice because you're a man after my own heart. I love you. I took you from nothing and I brought you here. And she said, just like mama, you know, mama used to tell you sometimes, I got to get you. And you know what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. I don't love you so much that I ain't going to whoop you. And if you had a black mama, she, she, why, she gave you a reason. Because well, she said, because when them people get you, to, thank you, Jesus. All right. We didn't have the same black mama, but it, she was black. She said, when them people get you down there. Uh-huh. And so he, he asked David. He said, David, he said, I'm going to give you a choice. He said, either you can fall in my hands or you can fall in man's hand. David didn't have to think about it, Tara. David, David, David said, oh, no, Lord. Oh, no. See, David knew about the providential care of God. Yes, sir. David realized that he wasn't nothing. He wasn't going nowhere. His daddy didn't see nothing in him. He realized that God took care of him. When he was a shepherd and a bear came 
God gave him power to kill the bear. A lion came. He took the, the lamb out of the lion's mouth. When his daddy wanted to choose everybody else beside him, God's providence said, oh no. I'm not going to let the oil fall on anybody else. He, he lets, I'm getting a little help this morning. You see what you're trying to say, preacher. What I'm saying is, is that when God got his hand on you, Woo, thank you, Jesus. When God, I ain't talking about the preacher. You see, because some of y'all been waiting on the preacher to like you. Some of y'all been waiting on the, the deacon to call you. But when God got his hand on you, whether the preacher like you, whether the mothers ever recognize you, because let me let you in on a secret. I don't care how God bless you. You got some folks ain't going to never see nothing in you. you. You got a group of folk that you going to always be what you was to them. So David said, he said, now let me fall in your hand, Lord. Because I know that if I fall in your hand, uh, the Bible says he whom the Lord loveth. He chases. Yes, he ain't never been nobody. If, if you won't whoop your child, you don't love him. Right. If you won't correct your child, you don't love him. If you got a child and you let them do anything they want to do, you don't never say nothing to them about what they do or whatever. You don't love that child. Right. The Bible said that the Lord loves you. That's, right. That's why he'll correct you. Right. He said, if you fall, he said, look, if I fall in your hand, I know God. You ain't going to kill me. Now, it might feel like I'm going to die. But I know that whatever I'm going through, when God gets through with me, I, I wish I had room to let you shout all out here. But, but I wish I had time to let you come get this microphone. Because you could tell about two or three folks that, Pastor, if I hadn't got the whooping that I got, if I hadn't have gone through what I went through, if I hadn't have had the trouble that I had, if the folks hadn't turned their back and lied on me like they did, if my loved ones hadn't have turned their back, I wouldn't know God like I know God. I know he's a mother for the motherless. I know he's a father for the fatherless. They provided for others and wouldn't provide for you. But you got a testimony that day you can tell them, say, Pastor, say he's bread in a starving land. He's a shelter in the storm. I thought it was going to be real bad because they walked off and left me. I, I, I thought, oh my God, what I'm going to do. But you know what you, what you learned what to do? You learn to join in a chorus with David. You say, hold on, David. I can say it with you. So, David, you ain't got to say it by yourself. I can join in with you that I'm going to lift up my eyes to the hills from which coming my help. My All of my help. It come from the Lord. You know, now, I, I don't know what you think. I can't go on how you think about my relationship with the Lord. But I know for myself. He says, she all right, y'all. Y'all go. Listen to me. He says, elect according to the foreknowledge of God. Yes, sir. Now, thank you. I couldn't play basketball that good. And so, Brother Davis, if I was standing on the sideline and it was some folks choosing who knew me, I wasn't going to get chauffeur. But if it was some new guys, because I was six foot two. Oh, thank you. 
kind of dipped in a ball and everything. You know what they said, Carl Ray? They said, give me Big Man. They didn't know Big Man could play a lick. But after I got out there, they hated they had chose me. But what I like about God is that God already knows everything. And even though God knew that after he chose me, that I'd go get on crack, that I would do all types of adultery and all kinds, even though God knew who I was, he still chose me. He still said, I can use you. He still said, you belong to me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all having fun yet? Look what he says. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God, the Father through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. You with me in verse 3? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy. You see, what I have to understand is I've never been made, I've never made it because people like me. I never made it because of my ability. I never made it because I was in the right place at the right time. You see, it was always dependent upon God's abundant mercy. You see, because as human beings, we don't have the ability to see around corners. You see what you see, baby, but you can't see around corners. Uh, you, you don't know. You cannot look across the uh, equator and see tomorrow. You, you don't know what's going to happen even in the next hour. And so I have to realize in the divine providence, Uncle George, that it's God. This God that's holding my hand. And that he decided to hold my hand. To, he decided to take me out. He called me out. Yeah. Then I have to realize that it's according to his abundant yeah. mercy. mercy. You see, church, mercy is different than grace. Mercy is different than grace. I thank God for grace, but, but, but I'm going to tell you something. If it wasn't for mercy, I wouldn't have got to grace. Let me tell you what grace is. Grace is when you get something that you don't deserve. Great Grace is God's forgiveness. I don't deserve God. Grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. You see, Jesus Christ made grace possible. Because he went to the cross and died and made a payment on our behalf that was accepted by the Father, then therefore we are able to be saved by grace and it is effectuated through faith. When I believe that his death, burial, and resurrection is sufficient to pay for my every sin, then I'm saved by grace through faith. It's not of me, but it's of God, and it's a gift from God. So I thank God for grace. But Vanna Jr., before I could get to grace, I needed mercy. When you're trying to get all of this set up, you ain't helping nobody. You got folks that's dying. You got families that's being torn up. You need to set out for God and say, God. I'm talking about the providential care of God. You, you got to quit looking for man to help you. And say, God, if you don't help me, if you don't help me, I won't, I won't be able to stand the storm. Because, Mother, I've seen them do this right here. I've seen them do this right here. I'm going to give you your license. And just like I'm giving them to you, I'll take them away. And I made up my mind right then, Brother Davis, you don't have to give me now. Because anything that you want to give me, and when you get mad, you want to take it back, you can keep it because I can live without it. I'm looking for God to give me something. You hear me, Fred? I want the Lord to bless me. The Bible says the blessings of the Lord bringeth no sorrow. When God... Let me tell you something. When God puts you somewhere... Can't nobody bring you down. They might not want you to have it. 
They might, it might hurt them every day when they see you, but ain't nothing they can do about it, Lisa, because the Lord put you there. You didn't put yourself there. I'm almost through. Let me, let me, let me, let me finish this, y'all. He says, verse 13, and he said, go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, behold, he is in Thotham. Therefore, send he thither horses and chariots and great hosts. They're going to send everything they got at you. And they came by night. You see, the police like to serve folks by night. Oh, whenever they come in, they like to bust the door down by night. I ain't talking about you, Fred. <laughs> but I ain't doing nothing but telling the truth. They, they like, see, because you see, when you bust in at 4, 5 o'clock in the morning, like they, they, there's an element of, of, of fear that you bring in. If you came at 12 noon, I wouldn't be as scared. I'm, everybody's asleep. Everybody, everybody, ain't nobody thinking at 4, 3, Boom, knocking the door down, coming in. Said so he came by night. Uh-huh. I'm still talking about the providential care of the Lord. What that means is it don't make no difference you come by day or night. Because the God of Israel does not sleep, not slumber. They thought he was sleeping behind the part of the ship. But, but, but when he woke up, he told him, oh, you of little faith. Huh? He told him, said, peace be still. Huh? I got your back. Even when you think I'm asleep, even when you think I ain't watching you, I got your back. Somebody said, all oh, the days of my life, the Lord been good to me. All the days of my life. Oh, we almost true. He says, and when, look at verse 15. When the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, and host come past the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servants said unto him, Alas, my master. And this tripped me out right here, Carl Ray. He didn't say, What shall we do? He said, How shall we do? <laughs> how? <laughs> How? That, see, that's what they mess you up right there, that how. <laughs> because you see, that you, now you done got in something ain't none of your business. <laughs> how God going to do what he got to do? He, he, he don't have time to try to tell you how he going to do it. Because all you got to do is just believe that he is. And that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. <laughs> So now the servant, I liken the servant unto my soulish part, my mind, my will, and my emotion. You see, my mind fights against my spirit. Because you see, the spirit parts of me knows God is going to bring me out. But when I try to figure it and cogitate it with my mind, that is when I say, how? How are we going to pay this bill? How? How? Yes, sir. How this going to straighten up? How are we going to ever get this back together? Uh -huh. the, the servant said, How? Shall we do? Look what the man said. I'm, this is it, y'all. This is it. This is it. Look what he says right here. And he answered. You see, the reason that you don't have an answer because you ain't never asked God. <laughs> that, that, that's the reason you don't have no answer. You have not because you ask not. <laughs> and when you ask, you ask amiss. <laughs> I double dog dare you <laughs> to get out on them black rusty knees <laughs> and I tell the Lord about it. <laughs> I don't care how they don't like you. I don't care what they said about you. <laughs> get out on your knees <laughs> and tell God about it. The saints used to sing a song, Valerie says, prayer brought me here. It was prayer. And thank God for my mother's prayer. When I didn't know how to pray, my mama prayed for us. Said, God, bring my child. Thank you, Jesus. This is the last verse, y'all. He said, when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth. Oh, no, I'm past. Where am I now? He said, 16, and he answered. Fear not. And this is the reason. I'm going to let y'all go. For they that be with us. Paul took the refrain in Romans, Brother, uh, uh, Brother Carmen Sims. And he said, if God, be, I'm talking about the providential care of God. You see, I don't know the how. I'd be lying to you today if I could tell you I, I know how God going to do it. But I know he is. And so he said, they that be with us are more than they that are against us. <laughs> it, they might not never want you, and they're not going to never want you. You got a group of folks that just don't like you. 
you ain't never done nothing to them. It just, you, you just don't float their boat. You just don't. Huh? But he says now, nah, but they that are false. You see, God got some folks that you ain't even been paying no attention to. God got some folks that just love you and just waiting on time to get a relationship with you. But you've been spending your time around Negroes that don't care nothing about you. <laughs> and so what you got to realize is that they be who be false. So you got to find out who for you. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I read the other day, said, 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 watch the folks that don't clap when you win. So open your eyes up. You can't even tell them when nothing good happened to you. Uh, Lord have mercy. Don't let, don't let nothing be about your children. So you know my child got accepted in what it really is. That's enough. Clap your hands for the Lord. <laughs>